in the midst of the storm. That's what I'm titling today's message. And technically, uh, you know, we're looking at Palm Sunday, looking at Easter. Uh, most churches aren't gathering, and uh, we might be get gathering virtually like this. And I just started to think, though we might not be doing what we, what we could have been doing on a Palm Sunday, just the picture of what that is. I really feel like right now there's, there's a, been a spirit of death that's been communicated throughout the land, not only in statistics about how many cases there's, there has been, how that's increasing, and how many people are actually dying in catastrophic numbers, and yet there's an overcoming victory. There's a, there's a, there's a spirit behind Jesus. When I pictured him riding into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, that was a setup for the showdown that was going to take place, where he was going to give up his life willingly, but then say, you know what, death, where is your sting? I have overcome you in the grave, yes. raised to new life, right? Breaking the power of death, right? And in that, giving us eternal hope that the same destination for us, for those that have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, mm -hmm. that place is waiting for us. And so in that, right now we are sojourners in this place, and I just think of really Palm Sunday as a picture of the, become, the, the entrance and an overcoming victory, a spirit of overcoming that squashes the spirit of death. And so right now when, when we might want to get uh, amped up looking at social media and checking out all the COVID updates and all this, I've, I've heard a great word of encouragement from one of my brothers in Christ that why don't we limit how much we're going to allow ourselves to take in each day on that stuff? Ration it. Get your five-minute, ten-minute fix. Get on there, read you some, whatever you got to do, but not too much of it because you know what? Jesus is active and living. He's moving in the hearts of men. He's using us to shine His light right now, and this too shall pass. He will overcome this. We will look back at it like we do other tragedies like 9-11, and this is more on a world scale, but this too shall pass. And so today my, my goal, my aim is to try to be an encouragement to everybody that's listening that where there is, and we worshiped about that earlier today, where there is certainly the attack from the spirit of death, may we reject that. We may, may we resist the devil knowing that the word of God says that he must flee from us when we reject him. So even in the snares of death, we will reject him and rejoice in our eternal hope. We will walk as overcomers. Those that, those that remain on this planet behind past this tragedy, God wants to do something with you. Amen. He wants to do something with you. He does not want you to be the same that you were before. Right? So, as I was, as I was thinking about this message, and I, I prepared this several weeks ago, and yet I knew that was right, right in the beginning of this. And, you know, I was like, I think it's still probably going to be accurate. I didn't know that I'd be seeing what I'm seeing today. I actually thought it might have passed quicker than it did. But regardless, what can we learn from it? You can walk in peace in the midst of the storm. And that's my hope today. Storms many times are defining moments in our generation. Defining moments. Right now, will you shrink back? We were just talking about giving, right? Our people in this small church family are not shrinking back. But that's finance, and that's great, and continue to do it. Praise the Lord. But in every area of life right now, do not shrink back. Okay? I'm not saying don't comply with local governing authorities and don't walk in wisdom. I'm not saying that. I'm not telling you if you're putting on a mask when you go outside to not do that. I'm not telling you any of that. I'm just saying right now is a defining moment in your generation. And God wants you to shine. That's, yes. that's the bottom line. And so our theme for the year uh, you know, is embracing God's holiness. And I was thinking about that. And if you're new to us, perhaps you, did, you weren't aware of that. But thinking about that for a second, that we serve a holy God. And how do we embrace His holiness in the midst of this storm that the whole world is facing, right? What does that look like? I really believe it's our ability to, to see the evidence of God and what He's doing. I believe it's the ability for us to embrace what He is doing, right? Even, even if we don't fully understand it, just the reality that He is doing something in our midst, right? And then we can rest in the fact that He is a holy God. He's a holy God that's in charge. He's not wondering if He can pull this off. He's not concerned. He has 
it all in the palm of his hand. He's an awesome God. He's sovereign over all things. He's in control and capable of all things. He's omnipresent. He's many things. He's beyond our human comprehension. He's greater than us. His ways are higher than ours. So in, even as we face some of these greatest challenges in our lives, I believe the Spirit of the Lord just wants to remind us, be still. Be still and know that I am not only God, but I am holy. I'm walking with you. I am for you. He is for humankind. He's for even those that reject Him. He's drawing the hearts of man. And I pray for revival and a great awakening to take place that we wouldn't have pictured walking into 2020 because of this. Not just what's going to happen to the economy, what's going to happen to my individual life or family and prayer for health and protection from the, from the uh, illness. But what's really going to happen in the world after this? That's what I'm excited to see. I, w I was uh, thinking about the, that whole concept of you know, defining moments in generations. And you look at the Word of God, and you can see many times people embrace God's holiness in their generation. Obviously not this generation. The Bible, as we know, was written before, right? But look at defining moments. People like Elijah, Moses, Esther, David, Joseph, Paul, just to name a few. Many people, defining moments, did not back down, stepped up, became what God asked that man or woman to become in that moment of time, right? And so the same God now at work in this generation asking you and me to respond and be who he's called you to be, it's, it's go time. It's time to show up and it's time to be present, people. I was thinking about this concept of how long is it going to go? And I think we can easily say that it's probably going to be at least 40 days where you look where it started, looking where the kind of stay-at-home order is in place. Maybe it goes beyond that. Then I got reflecting on the concept of 40 days and several things kind of stood out to me. So, you know, we're in a season of quarantine, are we not, right? We're in a season of quarantine. We can't deny that. Some of you might be in an essential business and out there and feeling like it's not a ton different besides you can't go to certain stores. But regardless, we're in a season of quarantine. Many theologians would, would say that the number 40 represents change. Represents change. Uh, it's kind of the time of preparing a person or a people, I could say a world, to make a fundamental change. That something will happen after those 40 days. And I really believe in my spirit that that's exactly what God's trying to do. He's trying to get our attention in this. Does that mean necessarily that He brought this sickness? I'm not necessarily going to go there and say that, right? But what I am going to say is He's going to take all things and use them for the good of those who love Him, who are called according to His purpose. And if you need to see confirmation of that, read Romans 8.28. So, if there's a fundamental change that's going to happen in the hearts of man, what is that? Began marinating on that. And then the quarantine, you know, what, what, what does quarantine even mean? Going back, and you'd, you'd find it originated in the Italian language, actually. And quarantine actually meant 40 days. And so, interesting in that. So, they, it was instituted at the time of the Black Plague, not COVID-19, but at that time, again, defining moments in a different generation, the Black Plague to keep ships from entering, actually entering the port for 40 days. And as I was talking before, and we'll look at the word a little bit later on this, but limit how much social media negative stuff you're taking in just because it's on TV or the internet doesn't even mean it's actually accurate people. You know, again, be discerning, educate yourself, do that, but don't Saturate yourself with such darkness that it wrecks you and your ability to be the light right now. So how can we be positive thinkers for the glory of God in the midst of this season of quarantine? Well, these are just some thoughts. And I, truth be told, I haven't gone out and actually like validated this. I'm not a scientist. So, you know, for any of you that uh, can correct me on this, you know, I'm fine to hear it. You know, you put up a message there, you can email me. But anyhow, when I look at some positives that make sense to me and, and, and looking at some information I got from people, 
some things that are happening right now because we are at rest, right? And we're not operating the way we used to be. Rivers can actually be cleaning up. Vegetation can start to grow. Air can be cleaner because there's less pollution. Theft could be less. Murders could be less. The earth in general is at rest for the first time in many years. What can you think of? What's the last time where something's just basically hit the entire world at the same time? Maybe you could go back to a world war, right? But there's lots of positives. Things are happening right now. As the, as the world's being restricted and contained right now, it's as if it's a season of preparation. And for those that are farmers, they know you prepare the ground and eventually you see a great harvest burst forth. And I'm believing and contending for that. And I'm encouraging you to do the same, that God is preparing for something greater. And I really believe it's, it's revival. It's an awakening. I believe it's things that we can't even comprehend right now. And I'm looking forward to seeing what they're going to become. A prayer, if you would want to join me as you go forward day by day in this, is just for spiritual liberation, not only for our nation, but the world at large. And so, I was looking, this one won't be on screen, but it, uh, even actually this morning in my quiet time, I was reading Luke 11, verse 17, uh, part B, and it said, Every kingdom divided against itself is laid waste, in a, in a divided house falls. And so right now, I mean, the, the irony that, that it's a, a national election year, things I've spoke about before, I really feel that it's pretty, it's pretty clear to see, even in some of the recent government stimulus that got passed and all that bickering and what was going on, there's a lot of division in our land on a lot of levels, right? And there's a lot of division throughout different countries, there's just straight up a lot of division in the world. And I'm believing that the Holy Spirit's moving through and going to train wreck that, kibosh it, and start to bring reparation where it needs to be. Be uh, a restored land where, where people that were offended or where they were hurt, where there was closed uh, access to things, be it, be it goods, be it all sorts of stuff. You know, adoption was getting closed in countries, all sorts of things. I believe things are going to change and they're going to shift. I think countries are going to work together. I'm believing for this, and I'm contending for this. And, and so I don't want to see our nation be a divided house that falls. So I would encourage you this year as we go forward, be reaching out to your local governmental authorities. Encourage them. Vote. Show up. Vote. Care. Care more than you did before, because this is a defining moment. 2020 is a defining year. And in that prayer, it's just I, I, I pray that, that not only our nation, but the world would emerge out of this thing closer together, more unified. Where we just see in the, in, our, in the frailty of our weakness, in our humanity, forget the color of your skin, your economic status, any other difference. It doesn't matter. Right now, everybody's seeing that in any moment, your life could be over like that. We are the same. There is a level playing field. And in this, I pray that people would love one another better despite their differences. I remember Pastor Ryan saying that in our original opening church video that we recorded four or five years ago, that that's what we're about here as a church. But I pray that that's what, the, that's what humanity becomes more about, where they stop being so quick to attack people and to point the finger, and they just recognize, you know what? We are all the same. We are made in God's image. We are humans. We are the human race, for crying out loud, I pray that God has His way so much, so powerfully, that we really see the world more loving. I've heard the president speak about that, seeing corporations doing crazy things in the positive, and I'm believing the shift is already taking place. And what the worst thing could be is that, let's say it's June, July, whenever it is, and things start to feel a little bit more normal, right, that we just go right back to where we were. The economy kicks right back in, and we forget all about it. I pray that you would take the individual challenge to love people better and differently as you go forward from this. And I believe if we each do our part, the world will start to be a better place and God will be glorified in that. And things will start to shift that would not have prior. People that had a calling previously might actually start doing something about it. People that need to make changes and commitments in their life might do it. People that have, that have 
stayed away from Jesus might fall on their knees and accept Him as their Lord and Savior. And in that sea, their, their life would be transformed for the glory of God. I'm believing for all these things. Things that people, saints way before I was ever even born have prayed for. Many of which are even still alive. That your prayers from way back in yesteryear will be fulfilled and answered in this present age. Have your way, Lord. Have your way in our lives. I pray that, that we would be more loving as a human race and that God, that you would have a worldwide victory. You would have a worldwide victory that we would see your spirit, your over overcoming spirit, just take over and shine in bold and great ways. So, again, walking in, in peace in the midst of the storm. Well, first thing I want to share today is, and you might be like, first thing, didn't you just share a lot of things? Well, yeah, I did, but this is actually the real first thing that I had, so hold on, here we go. God enables us to walk in peace in the midst of uncertainty. He enables us to walk in peace. Godly peace is not the same thing that you might think peace is, right? Peace doesn't mean that everything's just hunky-dory, the way you want it, sing kumbaya, red roses. It's not necessarily that. It might be. And if it is for you, praise the Lord. But what it means is people look at you and say, why do you seem so peaceful in the midst of all this insanity? Why aren't you like fearful for your life and stuff like that? I'd be like, my God's in control, right? I'm going to be used. I was even today, I, one of our families showed up at the church and we're, we're really honestly not expecting people to come besides like the, the core pastoral families. And I was just blessed that you guys showed up, honestly, right? And so I feel like in, in the midst of that, May, may each, each of us take it seriously. Like there's, there's ways that we can walk in peace. We can, be, we can be so fearful. I mean, it was weird and awkward. To be honest, just get a quick side tangent here. Like Friday night, I'm going to pick up takeout Asian food at like one place that still does it or something, right? And, and then like it's backed up and outside and it's this awkward, weird thing and everybody's trying to figure out how to like be socially awkward in an agreeable way or something like that. So it is, it is a strange time. But just to be at peace. And like I felt like when I was in there, I mean, they put a bulletproof glass type stuff and it was really weird, but the people working there just conveyed that to me, that there was a peace there where they were kind of like, we're going to be okay. This very place, uh, locally, Cafe East, they've been taking free food to the hospitals, the workers, blessing people. So there's, there's people out there being like, you know what? Get behind me, Satan. I'm going to show up. I'm going to keep pushing play and I'm going to show up like people that are working out every day. And I'm just going to keep doing it. I'm going to train myself through this to walk in peace. God enables you to walk in peace in the midst of uncertainty. You don't need to know what's going on. You don't need to know what's going on. You just need to be available and you need to trust God. If you're available and you trust God, you can walk in peace. If you actually believe that there is a God, there's one true God that's in control of all of this, that's going to make a way in all of this, and you can walk in peace. So, obviously, we're talking a lot about the coronavirus. You know, this is kind of tied to much of what I'll be talking about today. But fill in the blank. I mean, okay, this will pass. Coronavirus isn't going to be, like, around rocking our world, like, seven years from now. There's other stuff. You had junk going into this before corona. And truth be told, you might have a bunch of those things still going on right now in the midst of Corona. That just amplified it. So you fill in the blank what in uncertainty is for you. But, you know, I started journaling about peace prior to this. And, and again, so you can suck up the social media stuff, the fear stuff, or you can be like, I'm going to get in the Word of God for real, for real, more than I have before, right? This isn't judgment. Just you might be like, I haven't opened my Bible in a year. This app that Pastor Ryan's talking about, I don't even have an app on my phone. Well, you can go get the app. It's free. And if you don't have a Bible, please contact us anyway. Our phone number, whatever, we will get you one. Even if we have to deliver it to you straight away. Anyhow, but get in there and so start looking at the Word. If you have the app, put the word peace in. You'll see how many scriptures come up in, and God will start defining what peace means through His eyes, which is way more important. You know, for me, going into this, I had this even before the corona thing really kicked in. You know, uh, 
waves of staffing and hiring change that really like were like rocking me in my heart, very personal tough things, battles I was walking through for many, many months leading up to this. All at the same time, my wife would say, this is how we roll. We do crazy stuff all together. And we look at our, the last five, six years of our life, it's been like storm after storm after storm, but God's taught me how to do what I'm, I'm communicating to you now, how to walk in peace in the midst of that. So really when the next thing comes, it's kind of like, it's not like who cares, whatever, but really it's like, my God's got this. He had the last thing. He has the next thing. He has this thing. He has this church. He has this. Right now, we can be significantly investing in relationships greater than we were before. There's so much opportunity. Everywhere that you have a coin, there's two sides. Right now, what are you going to be? Heads or tails? I pray that you be heads. And if you get that analogy, positive versus negative. You know, I think social media hypes on the tail. You know, we're supposed to step on the head of the serpent and crush it. So let's go with heads. Jesus understands temptation more than anyone. I mean, think of the 40 days he was in the wilderness. He understands 40 days, right? I don't know. Maybe right now you, you could be like, literally, I don't have any food. And I'm not eating. And if that is you, as you mentioned, benevolence, like seriously, if there's desperate needs, contact our church. We want to help you. We will do anything we can to go out of our way to do that. But Jesus literally went in the wilderness without food while Satan came not only once, twice, but three times trying to just provoke him to dishonor his father. He understood suffering more than ever, the road to the cross. When we think of, about his death on the cross, he understands suffering more than any, anybody. He took on death of a criminal that wasn't even due to him, but he did it out of love. And then navigating storms in life better than anyone. Literally, literally navigating storms. Let's, let's look at that. So in the Word, help me out there. There you go. You're better a clicker anyway. I'll put that down. So let's look at a couple scriptures. Matthew 8, 23 to 27. I'm going to read out of the Amplified. You might not be able to see it on the screen unless you're here, but I'll read along with you. So when he got into the boat, he, his disciples followed him, and suddenly a, vo a violent storm arose on the sea so that the boat was being covered with, by the waves, but Jesus was sleeping. Sounds like the dude's at peace. He was sleeping, right? And the disciples went and woke him, saying, Lord, save us. We're going to die. You know, replace that even with COVID-19. You know, are we going to die? He said to them, why are you afraid, you men of little faith? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there at once a great and wonderful calm, a perfect peacefulness, the Amplified says, took place. The men wondered in amazement, saying, what kind of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? This is why I can walk in godly peace, and this is why you can walk in godly peace. He has it. He was like kiboshing waves and storms. Nothing gets him off track. This is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Jesus Christ is who he says he is. And the sad thing is, many times when we're living high off the hog and we don't need Him, we look beyond who He actually is. He hasn't changed. He's the same now and forevermore. I pray if you've never realized that, that now would be your time that you would repent. Repent and turn to Him and accept Him as your personal Lord and Savior. Tomorrow is never guaranteed. And if we need a reminder more than ever right now is a time. Tomorrow is never guaranteed. So while you can... Make that decision. Make that commitment. If you want somebody to pray with us, contact our church. We will gladly pray with you and celebrate. The angels rejoice when one person makes that commitment. Yes. Yes. Looking further in the New Living Translation in John 16.33, says, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. So a lot of times in the Word, Jesus would be like saying something to the disciples or whoever He was teaching, and then He would explain, you know. And so, I've told you this, that you would have peace in Me. He's trying to communicate this because, you know, in our flesh, like the light bulbs don't go off sometimes. We don't really get it. But He's saying basically, you can have peace in Me. Here on earth, you may have trials and sorrows, but take heart because I've overcome the world. That was true then, that is true now. Take heart, He has overcome the world. He's overcome death, 
He is sovereign over all things. And if that doesn't register in your heart, I pray you would meditate on that until it does. Another, another thought that I had, again, so I'm, I try to really be practical for those that don't know me, but like, say, all right, I hear this concept, Pastor, you know, peace in the storm, and God's big, and He's can be peaceful, and like, but how do I do that? The focus of your heart, the focus of your heart can bring us godly peace in the midst of the storm. So, where you focus your heart, where you focus your thoughts, that matters right now. So, again, limit social media. Seriously, control, like, stay updated, you know, is the president saying something? I'm not saying don't do that, but just don't sit there. I mean, there's so much pollution on the internet right now with this, and there's positive data going out, and medical professionals helping educate us and stuff like that, but, but limit this and focus on the things that God would want you to focus on. You might be like, well, what is that? Good question. I'm going to go there in a second. I'm going to show you in the Bible, the B-I-B-L-E, what we should be doing. But before we do that, so you've got to focus your heart on the right things. If you focus your heart on the right things, you'd be like, God's got this. God's got this, right? Until the point where you actually believe it, you're probably not focusing on the right things. So just keep contending. Keep pounding into that. Get in the Bible. Get on your knees. You're like, well, I don't like praying on my knees. Get on your knees. Humble yourself before God. Stick your face into your carpet in the ground. Get in your closet. Pray in the dark. Whatever you've got to do. If you focus on the things that God desires us to, then He promises to bring about peace to your heart. And if you have peace in your heart, you're probably going to be able to walk in peace, are you not? So application. So like, you know, Pastor Ryan, myself, other pastors throughout the land, it's just a title. Who cares? Like, you know, like, do you think that we're like different or better than you? Absolutely not. So, for me, one day my wife was asking, earlier on, I'd say a couple weeks back in this whole COVID-19 thing, she was like, you know, we're like laying there in bed, and she's like, you know, have you been like scared, or I forget what exact word she used, but something like that, and her asking was almost like, I really feel like God was using her, because I think like the day prior, I was like, yeah, I was kind of freaking out yesterday, like I normally didn't, but I, but I did for a window of time one day, so I'm, hey, it can happen to me. It can happen to any of us. I get it. And then I started looking at, like, why was that true? Why was that true that day? Why was that true compared to the other days? And I recognized that there was a disconnect where Satan, t two favorite weapons that he has, fear and anxiety. Fear and anxiety many times work together. And yet, I was out of the Word, I think, for like, Two days. And I'm not talking about legalism here, like, well, you better be in your Bible every day or you ain't going to be walking in peace. But I'm just saying there is a correlation there. I could see and be like, well, that's not normal for me. And start making excuses and like, oh, there's so much stuff going on and trying to figure it out and clients are contacting me and all this sort of stuff. And it's like, yeah, okay, but I need to wake up in the morning. I need to start with God. I need to fill myself up so I can have the peace of God in me that I can take that to the world everywhere I go. Even if I'm calling people, I'm doing Zoom video, it doesn't matter if I'm not physically going, but wherever I'm going throughout the day, I just saw a disconnect from me not being in the Word and starting to get easily pulled right into the fear and the anxiety that, that Satan's out there pitching through mass media and other means. Your great antidote is the Bible. Not because I'm a preacher, not because I'm saying that, it's just because it's true, people. So just open up your Bible, your app, whatever it is, and start reading it. Pastor Ryan was talking about this set apart uh, series we're doing. You know, I saw some of the people doing it. They like did the whole week in advance, and he was like, "Hey, one per week." But you know, as the people were like storming ahead, and so part of me was like, "Praise the Lord! All right, we'll have to get him another app." Like, so I, get in the Word, get in it more than you have, and you'll start to see that this is the God that's gone through so many things, parted Red Seas time and time again, done crazy, he, you know, bigger things than this. You know, he's got this. But if we don't remind ourselves of who he is, if we don't praise him for who he is in this, we're just going to be trying to operate in the flesh and, and try to just like hold on in desperation like you're like a person that hates roller coasters and you're all jacked up on a roller coaster, freaking out until it's like, 
you open your eyes and realize you peed your pants or something. Like that's not how he wants us to operate through this storm. He wants us to be able to walk in godly peace, to shine the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ through our countenance, how we operate. That just settles people, right? Your your next door neighbor, whatever it is, you know, the person you're dropping off soup to. Like I don't know, you know, just there's there's opportunities. The the UPS guy that drops a package off. Focus daily on having a grateful heart. That communicates your thankfulness to God and to others. You know, I've been finding myself doing this more. I probably should uh, be doing it in general, but, you know, I, I always do typically write down at least five or more things every morning that I'm thankful for. So it's a great practice. You can end your day that way, start your day that way, do both. But then I start recognizing, I just want to constantly, every time I think of something I'm thankful for, a person I'm thankful for, reaching out to them. It could be a text, whatever it is, and just try to encourage people. So right now, just recognize your simple contact with somebody could me, mean so much to them, more than you even actually realize. And when the Holy Spirit prompts you in such a way, and you're obedient, you don't even fully recognize what He's actually going to do in and through that. Just do what He shows you to do. May we encourage people more. May we have grateful hearts. The words that we speak in the midst of a storm like we're facing right now should be grounded in the Word of God. And sometimes we can say things, even if you feel like you're joking, you know, you just kind of like a slip of the tongue or you're speaking stuff over yourself where if you actually like record it and like look back at what you said, you're like speaking curses over yourself and people that you know and, and your family. Like you don't mean to. And I get sarcasm and some people are more sarcastic and stuff like that. And I'm not saying like change your personality. What I'm saying though is watch what you're saying. Speak life over yourself. Right? When we look at the spirit of death, when we look at an overcoming spirit, what's the difference between those things? Well, there's probably a lot of difference, but one is, I believe if you're an overcomer, you believe that you're going to overcome. So you're speaking life. You're walking in blessing. In the midst of tragedy, it doesn't matter what you're facing. You're walking in that. And yet, the things where people are like complaining about how hard it is and stuff like that, I'm not saying don't be a realist and don't you know, have feelings. What I'm saying is, Speak life. Speak positive things into the world and watch what God will do with them. So I talked about what does the Bible say? What does the Bible say we should be actually focusing our heart on so we can walk in godly peace? Well, here you go. Philippians 4, verse 6 to 8. It's a pretty well-known passage, but let's break it down. Don't worry about anything, it says. Anything. Don't worry about COVID-19. Don't worry about anything. Let me say it again anything. Instead, pray about what? Everything. Don't worry about anything. Pray about everything. There you have it. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. We just talked about that, right? Open your time in prayer thanking God first. It's a pattern shift for some people, but if you do it, there's power in it. Verse 7, then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything that we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus, in, in His power, under His authority. Verse 8, and now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing, and here we go. Fix your thoughts, or I could say fix your heart, right, on what is true, honorable, Right, pure, lovely, admirable. Think about things that are excellent or praiseworthy. Think about such things. That's a litmus test for you right there. That's eight things. Eight things that you can kind of frame. That's what you should be dwelling on. Those might be the things you're supposed to be writing down when I'm talking about journaling that stuff out. It's like all this hard stuff's happening, but there's good stuff in the midst of it every single day, right? You might be like, yo, I'm laid off. I'm unemployed right now. But you're like, I'm getting more opportunity to have quality time with my kids, you know. And I had to have, like, I felt like I wasn't being a good dad or good mom. We're both working. And what are you filling the blank? Are you redeeming the time? Right? And where you are, praise the Lord for these things each and every day as you walk right through this storm with God's peace in the midst of it all. 
Last, last point for today, and then I'll have the famous 27 pastoral closes before we're actually done, but my main last point for the day is this. Storms allow us to greatly deepen personal relationships in a special way if we allow them. That's what I'm talking about. The big prayer that I'm contending for, for the world at large, not just the U.S., and I'm praying a lot for the U.S. in specifics, our economy, all sorts of stuff, because we're, you know, if we can write the ship on this, we're going to really make a lot of things better for a lot of other nations, and if not, it's going to be hard on lots of other people. So I'm believing God will make a way, but right now, the relationships that we have, this is an opportunity for you to deepen them. And so we talked about people that, uh, maybe the people that you didn't like, you know, the, the co-worker that's annoying, the uh, family member that, you know, you get all jacked up about, the, the neighbor that you dislike, whatever it is. Um, Maybe you're really supposed to go out of your way now to love them so well that you come out of this thing changed. Maybe they beat you to the punch and you're humbled by the fact that they show you that first and, and, and you respond in love. I don't care how we get there. I just pray we get there as a people across the world. And so, you know, the reality that our relationships should be better than they were entering into this. And uh, right now, uh, I can say, like, I have certain ones that are a great challenge to me. And, you know... What I'm communicating to you, I know in some situations will be really, really hard. But if you're walking in the flesh, it's going to be really, really hard. In the moments where you recognize you're walking in the flesh, even yesterday I told my wife, I said, if I talk about such and such person, one of these tough relationships, like tell me, like smack me, like I, you know, I don't want to go there. I want to be doing what I'm going to be communicating to the people today. Not just because I was going to preach, but because I'm recognizing that I need God's help and really I want to deepen relationships. I want my relationships with the ones that are the toughest to become better. And if that's true, I'm believing that all the other relationships will become even more easy to be more better. So that was really bad grammar. But anyhow, <laughs> you get the point, I think, right? So anyhow, uh, you know, challenge yourself now. Where are the fractures in your relationships? Where are the fractures? Where can they be a part of what God does beyond just restoring the economy and bringing healing to the land? Can you come out of this where you actually value people more? Will you care more? Love people more. Love the ones that upset you the most. They might not love you back, but will you come out of a different loving better? And I pray that that is one of the things that you redeem in the midst of this storm. We're, we're all going to be unified together by the unknowns of our today. That's a reality right now. When you look at the statistics, you know, I think I was reading something that was like 500 and some deaths yesterday in New York or whatever it was, you know, like, and talking to a friend in Australia, we have 227,000 cases or something. They have only 5,000. Like, everybody's kind of sharing, and this is really a worldwide thing people are talking about. We're all unified right now, right now by our unknowns of our day, of today. And so as Pastor Ryan said, again, a level playing field. He was talking about technology, and small big churches and all. Every aspect of the world really right now is becoming leveled, right? And so in that, recognize that you're not better than anybody else. Everybody needs to know the love of God. And if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, you're an ambassador of His kingdom, you are a co-heir with Him, you are meant to shine the light and do so in any practical way that you can. That your relationships will be strengthened and changed. No relationship can be deepened right now more than our relationship with Jesus Christ. And we were worshiping in that regard. He didn't know I was going to say that, but that's the truth in reality. Holy Spirit just affirming it. No relationship should be deepened more than our relationship with Jesus. So, just for a moment, I'm going to speak to the church at large, the big C church throughout the world, right? I don't care about your denomination. I don't care about, you know, what instruments you play or what you do or don't do or any of that. Can we just be about Jesus? Can we be about getting closer to Jesus? Can we, come, can we leave this? I know in our worship music, we talked about laying down our religion. Can we take that seriously? The personal relationship of Jesus Christ. Love Him. He's real. He's, he's calling out to us. He wants 
to be closer to you. Come near to Him. He will come near to you. And so, in that, if that is one of the greatest changes that happens in your life, what, what's God going to do with that for the rest of your days that are here? I'm excited to, to hear about that for those that I'll be able to interact with personally. There's power in that. That's one of the things right now. You don't want to be sleeping. You don't want to miss that. You want your relationship to G, with Jesus to become more real. And if you're like, how do I do that? Probably things like praying more, getting in the Word, you know, reaching out, loving people, starting to do the things you're like, there's tons of families where like, they don't communicate with people. They never reach out. It's like, oh yeah, well we're busy and everybody's busy. And it's like, yeah, everybody is busy. I'm, I'm a realist. I get it. But you're only too busy for things if you say so. You have the same 24 hours every single day until God says your life's over. And so in reality... I think investing more in our relationship with Jesus right now would be wise. It would be the best investment you can make. You're watching the stock market go down and you're like, ah, maybe you're pulling out money and trying to figure out things. I would encourage you not to do that. Ride the storm. Long view of time will be fine. But we're not talking about finances too much today. I'll just say that Jesus wants to be center stage. Center stage in this where you know you recognize like I can do that. I'm not going to freak out about my finances because Jesus is the boss. He's in control. And I only had that stuff because He gave it to me, right? You can't serve two masters. So let's not even try to get that confused. Let's look at a few last scriptures in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 41, verse 10. And this is just, again, trying to reinforce things. Don't be afraid, for I am with you. There you go. Jesus is like, I'm with you in this, right? You might not physically be able to see Him like you're seeing me right now if you're watching online, but He's with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and I will help you. I will hold you with my victorious right hand. He is an overcomer. He walks with an overcoming spirit and our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit, so we are meant to walk, church, with the same victorious spirit. As he's working in us. That's what he wants. He doesn't want anything less for us than that. And he doesn't want us to just show up in tragedy moments. But hey, if it needs to be a reminder for us now where we were walking kind of in a defeated attitude and we need to pivot and shift, well, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that that's what happens for your life. The book of Luke, chapter 12, 22-26, says this, then turning to his disciples, Jesus said, That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. And that you could insert COVID-19. I mean, it's, it's everyday life right now. Is it not? Whether you have enough food to eat or clothes to wear, for life is more than food, and your body is more than clothing. Look at the ravens. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for God feeds them. And you are more valuable, far more valuable to him than any birds. Verse 25, can all of your worries add a single moment to your life? We know the answer is no, right? Verse 26, and if, you're, if worry can't accomplish a little thing like that, what's the use of worrying over bigger things, right? You might like to enjoy... Worrying because you feel like it's something that helps you to feel like you're in control, but you ain't. And I would just encourage you, let that junk go and embody, embrace the holiness of a holy God. Recognize that that peace can be transfused into you right now in the name of Jesus. You don't need to wait. Just recognize, lay that down, lay down, cast your burdens upon him because what? The word tells us he cares. Two more, I believe. Oh man, there you go. Psalms 27, 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation, so why should I be afraid? The Lord is my fortress, protecting me from danger, protecting me from COVID-19. So why should I tremble? Right? If we know Jesus is our Lord and Savior, we know where we're going. I pray that your life does not come to an end right now in the midst of this. Clearly, I would rather be able to be here celebrating and living life with you on this planet. But the Word's telling us, 
Why should I be afraid? The Lord is my light. He is my salvation. And if that's you and you're like, hey, uh, I've never accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, you don't need to be at a church building to do that right now. Right now, you can just get on your knees, cry out to God and say, will you accept me? The answer is yes. The answer is yes. There's no other answer. The answer is yes. And just say, will you accept me? I acknowledge you for who you are and what you've done. I believe that you died on a cross for the forgiveness of man, for the sins of man. Thank you that you did that. And there may be a lot of details, Jesus, I don't understand about you, but I want you. I want you in my heart. I want you to change my life. I accept your free gift of salvation. And I declare with my mouth that you are my Lord. I want to do what you want me to do with my life. That's all you have to do. Pray something to that effect. He knows your heart. There's no magic words. He does. He's not looking for some formula. But I pray if that's you and that's not, you haven't taken that step, today's the day. If you're the, even in our worship song, if you're the one that's kind of like, oh, you know, I'm supposed to be ashamed. I'm not going to, you know, I, I'm not worthy. It's like, you know what? He says, come to me now. All who are weary and heaven laden. All come to me now. So that is a lie from the pit of hell that you're believing. If you're ashamed and you're believing you can't be accepted, He can redeem all of your sin. Every, every sin you've walked into this moment with, He can redeem these things. So I pray today that you would do that business with the Lord Jesus if you have not. And watch that your life would be changed. And maybe you start to embody some of the things we talked about today. You start walking in godly peace, which really, peace is part of the fruit of the Spirit. Right? It's, it's part of what God wants to manifest in and through you as, you as you do life. One more scripture, I believe. Um, so, Psalms 46, verse 1. And this is in the Passion Translation. I really liked how it communicated there. God, you are such a safe and powerful place to find refuge. You are proven help in time of trouble. More than enough. More than enough. And what we're facing right now, He's more than enough. And always available to help whenever I need you. So that's the truth. That's the Word of God. He's saying right now, I'm more than enough. I'm available. I can and will help you. Come to me. And, you know, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't really... Stop at that. You know, I have a little bit of practical application takeaway for you. For those who are kind of like, I'm getting this scripture stuff, but like, I really like, can you just like give me a little bit more like basic stuff that I can just take as like little nuggets for today? We're, we're meant to be a city on the hill, church. We know the word tells us this. We're meant to be the light of the world and we're supposed to, in general, but certainly now walk supernaturally charged by the power of the Holy Spirit, right? So I believe even as I'm communicating with you now, I've said things today that I did not prepare. You're meant to go out and just let God have His way in and through you. Godly peace blesses others. And it's a blessing for the children of God to walk in it. Walking in a powerful way right now, with a sound mind, embodying and understanding the love of God and sharing that with other people. Rejecting the devil, rejecting fear, renouncing anxiety in the name of Jesus. Share the peace of the world, share that peace with the world and engage in conversations. Think about the people that you know that are fearful most right now. They might be the people that God wants you to do something with. Pick up the phone. There's safe ways to communicate. Love them through it. Pray through it. No magic prayers, just love people, right? There's an open door for the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ right now like we typically do not see. Don't miss it, church. You're supposed to be a part of it. It's not my job and Pastor Ryan's. It's our job, all of our jobs. You have access to people that I do not. You have people that you can touch that you will bless that I cannot. And I would challenge you this week, encourage people of influence that you know. Those that have influence that you see being fearful, recognize they affect many. But could God use you to breathe life into them, to change? You know, I talk with many people fearful about laying people off for the first time and just all sorts of stuff. I told 
All the people I work with, I'm like, you call me anytime, I don't care what time of day it is, forget about my normal boundaries, whatever, until we're through this thing, you're, my, you're part of my family, right? And yet, still, there's people of influence that are walking in fear. And yet, at the moment where that can shift and change and they can have peace, they're gonna, it's as if they're going to give a transfusion of peace into other people. And so, you might be the one that changes a person of influence for God's glory. Renounce anxiety, fear, and worry in the name of Jesus. Get on your knees and cry out to Him if you don't know how to do that. That's a starting point. That might be something that you tell somebody else to do that doesn't know how to begin. So what I'm telling you is maybe for you, and maybe it's not for you. Maybe it's for you to tell somebody else. So be praying about who that might be. Be a lighthouse. Let the, light, let the love of Christ be seen radiantly from you now. It's meant to shine brightly. Not just a little flicker here and there. Brightly. Seek to be an intentional encourager of everyone that you see that's struggling, like I just said. Stay calm. Stay calm. That's one of the things you can do right now. Don't get jacked up. Stay calm. Focus on God and stay vigilant in prayer for the specific needs that you see. Our fellowship's been in this 24-7 prayer movement. You know, Pastor Ryan and I have been battling in early AMs together, and, and yet... Like, we don't need a specific thing like that. You don't need to be a part of some collective initiative. Just, you do your part. You battle in prayer, right? You have needs. You know who has needs. Pray for those things. Respond to storms like coronavirus that we're in now with faith and a redemptive spirit and voice. So we're talking about that overcoming spirit. A redemptive voice. Like, redeem this time. Do stuff with this now. Speak that out where, you know, it's where you're being attacked, you're going to go through this coming out better. Speak those things over yourself and other people. Build deeper relationships with the neighbors, with your co-workers, with others. Look for creative strategy right now to respond supernaturally. Ask God, what does that look like? I believe lots of people have been doing lots of crazy cool things. I am blessed even by the young boys in this church with Pastor Ryan, some of his kids have been putting these different, you know, they're reading the Bible and putting these different skits on. They did a Good Samaritan I was seeing recently. You know, people are redeeming this time. They're making the most out of it. Young and old, do your part. If you've been affected financially in significant ways, don't hesitate to ask your church if you're not a part of our church. Ask our church. Ask the church for help. Don't be ashamed to do that. Ask your friends. Ask your family. Ask other people that you know that you can help, that can help you. If you haven't been affected much, conversely, by this, praise the Lord, but pray about how God could use you to help other people in practical ways. We're talking about diaper drives, you know, Conestoga Food Bank. We've got all of our own localized things here, but you fill in the blank. What could that be? Open up your pocketbook. Open up your heart. Open up everything you've got right now for the world needs it. Encourage your healthcare workers. Encourage your local politicians. Stop pointing fingers at people. doesn't matter what party they're in. Doesn't matter, you know, what you've read about them or whatever it is. Recognize that they're in places right now of power and they need our support. They need to know that not everybody is against them. They need to be reminded that there's a God who's for them, who loves them. Pray for your other community leaders now, business leaders, all sorts of people that need to be calm in the midst of the storm. The things I'm talking about, again, that translates to the people of influence. And you're like, well, maybe I'm not a healthcare worker. I'm not a politician. I'm not even a leader in the community. Well, what can I do? Well, you, can, you know somebody that is, and you can reach out to them. Send them an old school letter. Send them a tweet. Send them a text. Send a phone call. I don't care. Do whatever you got to do, but do something, right? And if nothing else, pray, knowing that your God hears your prayers, right? He, he, go, and, go in a secret place and pray for these things, and your God hears these prayers. Pastor Ryan, can you come on back? So, truth be told, we were going to do communion today and all that ain't happening. But, um, what I will say is I'm still going to try to do two things here. And if you can't see it as great online, hopefully you'll be able to at least hear it well. But I want to say a couple quick ending statements we're going to play a very short video that I think does a great job set to music to encourage us to walk as overcomers in the overcoming spirit. 
And then Pastor Ryan's going to come right behind as I uh, send out declarations of prayer over us. If you're online or if you're here, and if you're here, then uh, certainly go in peace. If you guys need individual prayer, we can pray it six, six feet away. But if you, before we play the video, a couple things I was thinking, again, as it relates to this, the, and the video was originally going to be a part of communion, but I still felt like we should go forth with it. That there's people, there's people now that, like I was talking to my friend that's in Australia that had, just had a baby, complicated many weeks early, still in the ICU, and then COVID-19 happens and the it's, this baby still can't even come home. And yet, the people right now, for, for the youth, you guys, like th this is, you're, you're going to be impacted by this. It's going gonna, it's gonna to make its mark on your life. And, and in that, I really believe, and I'm praying that it would become a testimony, a testimony of the power of God and who He really is. And so even for that little baby girl in Australia, it's like, I'm believing by faith that she's going to overcome all these physical complications. She's going to be birthed in a season of chaos and she's going to become an overcomer in the name of Jesus. And you don't need to be an infant in a hospital and to land down under. But I really believe for a lot of people right now that God wants us to really recognize that this is a defining moment. This is a turning point for us where we can be used in new ways and that it's exciting. What's, few, what's, what's ahead is exciting. Don't listen to the devil. Don't listen to any other noise. Listen to the voice of truth. God's in our midst, at work, and exciting things will be birthed from this. Believe these things. Speak these things over yourself and others. This too shall pass. God's got this. This too shall pass. He's an overcomer, and He wants us to walk as an overcomer.